Hi everyone, and welcome to another video in the Motion series. In this video, we're finally going to move beyond looking at objects that move, uh, in which case I'm talking about videos about velocity, acceleration, displacement, distance, speed. And in this video, we're going to finally look at why objects move, which is due to forces. Uh, in this video, we're actually not going to look at objects that accelerate. We're going to look at that in further videos. What we're going to look at are objects that are either moving at a constant velocity or they're not moving at all. Because if an object is not moving at all, it's staying perfectly still, that tells you that it's not accelerating. So this term up here is equal to zero. And if a term over here is equal to zero, it also tells you that the sum of the forces is equal to zero. So this little symbol means sum. And if the sum of forces equal, is equal to zero, that is simply telling you that all the forces that are acting on the object, if there are indeed forces acting on the object, are balancing each other out. To demonstrate this, we'll use the example of a block that's dropped towards the ground. So there's the block, and then a second later it's hit the ground there. Whilst the block is dropping, it has a weight force acting on it. Say that, we'll say the block has mass m. And the weight force is always equal to the mass times the gravitational constant. And in physics we take g at the surface of the Earth to be about 10. So that's the weight force there. This object has no other forces acting on it if we ignore air resistance. And therefore, it's accelerating downwards because forces act to accelerate an object. However, after that one second of falling, after it's rattled around and come to a complete stop on that surface, it's no longer accelerating downwards. It's not boring a uh, hole into the earth there, for, uh, still traveling downwards. It's come to rest and it is no longer accelerating. So here, the acceleration is probably around equal to 10 meters per second squared and here it's equal to zero. It is not that gravity has been switched off. The force of gravity is still acting on this block here, which is why if you were to go and try and pick it up, you would have to overcome that force. What is happening is that another force is now acting on this block so that the sum of forces is zero. And that force is the normal force. And really that's the pressing force of the ground on the block. And the normal force always acts at right angles to the surface. So if that's the surface there, there's the right angle. And if the object were on a slope like that, the normal force would act in that direction there to make that right angle. And the normal force here, if this object truly is not accelerating, is also equal to mg, just in this case. But normally we say the normal force is given by n. So this is an example of an object that does have forces acting on it, but at the same time is not accelerating because the forces are cancelling each other out perfectly. We could introduce another force. We'll say it's the driving force. So the driving force. So after this block has fallen down, we might have a person come along here and push on the block that way there. So we'll remove the person, but we'll leave the force arrow. There's the driving force. But this person isn't very strong. They haven't been to the gym enough. Uh, and they're not able to move this object. Everyone's come across this phenomenon in, in everyday life, unless you live your whole life on an ice rink. It's where an object is, people say, rubbing against the ground so hard that you can't actually get it into motion. The reason that is the case is because there's also a resistance force acting uh, from the ground on the object. So the friction force of the ground there. If you are truly 
pushing that object with some force and it's not moving, that indicates the resistance force is equal to your driving force there. And we'll give the resistance force symbol R. So this is an example of an object that even though it has four forces acting on it, its acceleration is zero because the sum of forces is zero, which is due to the fact that these forces are acting against each other and cancel each other out. Let's look now at a question with real values. I uh, will say, yes, we'll still use this side, but that side is no longer useful. Okay, we have an object of mass 10 kilograms sitting on a surface being pushed with a driving force of 120 newtons but it is not accelerating let's uh, challenge ourselves to find the magnitude of each of these three unknown forces so we know the driving force first of all the weight force is equal to mg we have the mass so the weight force is equal to m which is 10 times g which is also 10 so that's 100 newtons. Now let's look at the resistance force. The object is not accelerating. That tells us that it's not accelerating to the right, nor is it accelerating to the left there. If that is the case, the forces to the right and to the left must balance each other out. The reason why we don't have to look at the normal force or the weight force here is that the normal force and the weight force don't act to the left or to the right. They act purely upwards. So the only forces that are pulling to the left and right are the driving force and the resistance force. So we say the sum of forces horizontally is equal to zero. The sum of forces is equal to the driving force plus the resistance force. And that is equal to zero. Rearranging, we get 120 is equal to negative R, or R is equal to negative 120. What that is telling us is that when I say the sum of forces here, I actually end up with a negative value. And that's telling me, even though I had to add the forces up, R is acting not in the positive direction there, but in the negative direction that way. So R is equal to 120 newtons because this arrow already tells us it's acting to the left. Most people prefer to write that out like this. So the sum of forces is equal to zero, therefore the forces going this way are equal to the forces going this way. So 120 is equal to the value of R and then you've solved it straight away. 120 is equal to R and we don't have to worry about negatives. This is my preferred method. Once you start involving negatives, it gets a little bit dodgy. Try to reason yourself the direction of the arrows, whether the force is you know, a negative or a positive force. So we've got three forces now. We've got the driving force, the weight force, and the resistance force. The last force is the normal force. Force is almost starting to sound like not a real word. I'm getting that, what do you call it, somatic saturation. I've said it too much. We know that the sum of forces in the vertical direction is also equal to zero because A is equal to zero, acceleration. Therefore, the forces acting up must equal the forces acting down. So the normal force is equal to 100 newtons. Not a very difficult problem, but when things start to go on angles, so the driving force starts to become an angle driving force, things get more complicated. That's what we're going to look at right now. Okay, so surface, block, weight force. We'll say the block is again 10 kilograms. So weight force there. Driving force acting now at 60 degrees to the horizontal. So this block is being pushed or pulled upwards like that. Uh, not that it's going to move in that direction, but just that is the direction 
uh, which it is being pulled. And then we have a resistance force in yellow going this way. And we have also that normal force acting straight up there. If the driving force, now we'll say we need to know, if the resistance force is equal to 8 newtons, there's 8 newtons of friction, let's solve for these three forces here. First of all, let's look at the forces that are pulling the object left and right. The resistance force is clearly trying to pull the object left. The normal force is not acting, uh, is acting neither left nor right. The weight force is acting neither left nor right. But the driving force does have some lean to the right. So if there were no resistance force, you would expect this object to travel in that direction there, either horizontally or even if this force were big enough to fly up in the air like that. The point is, this force here has some component in the horizontal direction. Forces are vectors. That means we can play with them as if we were playing with a vector. We can replace this one driving force with two smaller forces. So we'll call the driving force, uh, we'll just call it big F. It has two components. We'll do them in purple. One horizontally and one vertically. So if we were to assume that there were actually two driving force forces acting on this object, it would behave exactly the same way as if there were just the one in red there. So what we're going to do is pretend the red one doesn't exist and that there's actually one purple one here and another purple one acting there to approximate it. No, to model it, to model it. The size of this force here is equal to cos 60 degrees F. The size of this force here is equal to sine 60 degrees F. So I can now effectively rub out that driving force there and I'm left with two forces that will cause the object to behave exactly the same way. We know that if this object is not accelerating, I hope I mentioned that, the object is again stationary. The sum of forces in a horizontal direction is zero and the sum of forces in a vertical direction is zero. If the sum of forces horizontally is zero, that means that cos 60 degrees driving force is equal to the resistance force. Or otherwise, the driving force is equal to rearranging 8 divided by cos 60, which is equal to 8 divided by a half, which is equal to 16 newtons. So that red force, which we've now made redundant, was actually 16 newtons in size. So we've solved one part of this question. What was the driving force? 16 newtons. The second part of this question we want to solve is to find what the normal force is. And we're going to use a similar method. Scale that down, move it up. The sum of forces in a vertical direction is equal to zero. That means the force is acting up the normal and this force here are equal to the force acting down. So the normal <coughs> plus sine 60 degrees and we know F now is 16 is equal to mg which is equal to 10 times 10. The box is 10 kilograms and G is equal to 10. So N plus sine 60 16 is equal to 100. N plus sine 60 degrees, that's root 3 on 2. So root 3 on 2 times 16, 13.85, we'll just say 13.9, is equal to 100. So N is equal to 100 take 13.9, which is equal to 86.1 newtons. 
in this case here, we're about to finish this video, in this case here, the normal force was exactly equal to the weight force because there, were, there were, was no other force helping to lift this object up like that. So the normal force really had to step up to the plate, so to say, and supply all that force. In this question here, the weight force is 100 newtons, but the normal force is only 86.1 newtons. The reason the normal force does not have to completely counteract the gravity force or weight force here is because we also have some upward force from that driving force there, helping the normal force out. Uh, in further videos, we're going to look at questions in which the sum of forces is not zero and in which the objects are actually accelerating, solved in a similar way, but a bit more interesting.